Cracker Round Table here in St. Petersburg, Russia, right? So what are we doing today, gentlemen? Enjoying. Hmm? Enjoying time. Enjoying time with friends. That's the most important thing when it comes to smoking hookah, right? Yes. Okay, so today I think they gave us some topics to discuss. Anybody here like to discuss or to start? It's okay. I'll do this. I'm prepared for you guys. Yeah. Okay. So what we have here is uh, Hookah Expo, or actually uh, Hookah Club Show 2020 in St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, it's an amazing show. I'm glad uh, El Faka came out to this um, to, to be more powerful in Russia because uh, El Faka is a great brand for me in the United States. Uh, I've been dealing with uh, El Faka for maybe ever since I started, about 11 or 12 years ago. So, what is El Fakhr? What is Russian hookah culture? Okay, Russian hookah culture is so advanced from the rest of the world. Okay, traditionally, one might think uh, hookah is maybe Middle Eastern culture, right? That's where it came from originally. It spread around the world. The U.S. is a big market. Brazil is a big market. Um, Germany is a big market. In Russia, I was here three years ago, and Russia was like this. Now, Russia is like this. Not just at Hookah Club show, but at every lounge. I believe you have... Uh, who's from St. Petersburg? Anybody? Nobody. Nobody? No. I believe they have 300 hookah lounges in St. Petersburg. Uh, many of them open 24 hours a day. What I like to do is, uh, when I go to a lounge, they ask me, what will you like to eat, uh, to smoke? And so I say, give me your special. What do you want? Because Russia does it like no other country in the world. They mix three to four flavors every time. They have shisha masters. Okay, it's not, you know, hookah is very simple to prepare a hookah, right? It's not supposed to be difficult. But in Russia, they make it a very good, like, um, presentation. So they'll take three flavors, four flavors, put them together, and come out. Not only that, it's not only about mixing the bowl. They put it in front of you. The shisha master comes, he's smoking your hookah to test it. He drops to one knee, usually, and waits for you to give him the okay. This is a beautiful thing. It's like a fine dining establishment, but with hookah, not food. So I've been playing with a lot of mixes myself. Um, I like traditionally for El Fakhr, orange and mint. Okay, uh, I just want to ask something else. Am I the only one recording or is El Fakhr recording? Nobody knows. Okay, so I'm just talking to you guys. Okay, that's all right. Okay, I thought there's a camera. I'm looking, where's the camera? Okay, so, so I'll be more, uh, how do I say? Not so official. So, um, Doing the mixes that I like, uh, I like a lot of citrus, a lot of mint, um, but there's some flavors that Afakhar makes that is not so common, like uh, jasmine or um, cardamom, okay? So you take cardamom and jasmine and mint and make these three flavors together and it comes out amazing. Uh, especially for someone who, like me who doesn't choose these flavors regularly, uh, only when I need a change. Because, like I said, orange mint is for me. Grapefruit and mint, I love those flavors. Um, they're citrus mint, I really like those. So, Russia is giving the rest of the world inspiration as how to present hookah. So, do you guys agree that you're visiting, yes, you're visiting Russia for the first time? Or many, have you been to many hookah lounges? Yes, we've been to Sanger Lounge and uh, Hookah Box Aviator. Hookah Box Aviator is the first lounge I went to in St. Petersburg three years ago when they opened. Isn't it amazing? It's incredible. I mean, mind blowing. Where are you guys from? Oh, okay. Spain, Spain, uh, represent Spain, yeah. From Spain from is, uh, okay. Spain is uh, growing Spain a lot. is on its way up. Okay, so that's good. It's perfect time for you maybe to learn from Russia, but put your own Spanish style into it. You know, I don't know what that is. You will come up with it, right? So, uh, but me as um, an American, and I learned shisha in Lebanon maybe 20 years ago. I really like what Russia is doing, and I'd like to see what uh, other countries can do. 
such as Spain. Uh, Brazil has its own culture. It's very different from Russian hookah culture. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Spain, what you can do. But try mixing non-traditional flavors with al Fakhr. al Fakhr used to have a, um, a saying, it was, called, um, it was marketing, it was called infinite mix, maybe three or four years ago. And it's true because they have, you know, say 60 flavors. Uh, it's an infinite mix. You can come up with whatever you like. Okay. I'm the only one smoking? No, I don't have any other. I, don't, I cannot reach. Can oh, this more. is for me? Yeah. No, that's okay. Here. Let me. Do you have a mouthpiece? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So just for my audience at home, because I'm recording this too, I want to introduce you guys. Uh, so you three gentlemen are El Fakir team, España. Okay. Spanish influencers. Spanish okay. influencer. What's your name? Is Vicente with Andalus Shisha. Okay. Yes, I think I've seen your work. And you? Ruth Shishas. Okay. Nice to meet you. So. Germans are in the house here too. Germany was the first leader. What do you think of Russia so far? Yes. What do you think of Russia so far? Is, they, is it getting better than Germany or they still have a way to go? Exactly. I believe that's a very good word when you're describing hookah. Um, Germany is uh, one of the greatest shisha markets. I don't want to say markets, cultures in the world. Okay, so it's one of the first places I visited, I believe, around the same time I came to Russia three years ago. I went to uh, Frankfurt to Shisha Mess, and it's amazing what you guys do there. How far are you taking something, like I said, hookah is very simple. All it is tobacco and a pipe, water and a hose. That's it. But the innovation that came out of Germany, for many years now, maybe 10 years, right? The German market is going crazy. So I really, it, but it's different from Russia. It's a different culture and different from Espana and different from uh, Brazil and different from the US. So I really like that our thing here, uh, hookah, uh, the thing that we all share from around the world, we can get together a few times a year and do that and share our experiences. So uh, thank you for my German friends in doing that. But the Spanish market as well is, uh, I think it's taking inspiration. The Spanish market, I believe, is uh, it's a, it's a, for me. Okay, it's, uh, it's taking inspiration a lot from different markets. Uh, usually uh, it, looks, uh, it looks to uh, uh, Russian style devices, but uh, not Russian style smoking. So. Uh, still the uh, blonde leaf is predominant yes. and the dark leaf is uh, becoming more and more interesting but more to the experienced customers and uh, these guys are doing a great work you know by uh, expanding you know their uh, their knowledge and uh, communicating to their uh, customer base and in particular in lounge what we've seen in um, what we've seen in uh, in St. Petersburg so far is that you don't have a menu uh, what usually is uh, available in uh, in Spain, where you have the premixes, all the flavors, and then maybe you can ask for you know advice for the shisha masters. But over here in St. Petersburg, you have a much deeper connection with the shisha master, and uh, you you only ask for what would you like to smoke, the intensity, and then they prepare it for you, which is a uh, much more deeper contact with uh, with the product itself. I believe that that's uh, what that was the main topic that uh, what we've seen so far, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. One other thing when you talk about the, the passion for this and the experiences is three years ago I started hookah because I was studying in the uni. So I gathered with my partners to study and when we ended, when we finished studying, we would light the hookah and smoke it all between us. So if three years ago you tell me you will be in Russia in three years with people from all around the world in one of the biggest shows in the world, I wouldn't believe you. You know, and Hookah is great, but what is greater is the experience that it brings to you. You socialize, you meet people, you get experiences. And that's what I love about this, you know. You, it brings people together. 
So it's really nice. It's really nice. Really like it. So my, my opinion of smoking uh, hookah with friends is that the hookah is actually secondary. The most important thing is socializing, the camaraderie, having your friends together. You can discuss whatever you're discussing, work, family, politics, eating, drinking. But the hookah is always something that's in common. It's like a bond, brings you together. So I really uh, appreciate it. And um, Like I said, I'm looking forward to going to Spain and seeing what you have. And then also, I hope you guys get a chance to come to Las Vegas in June, where we have Hookah Expo worldwide, because it was Germany and Russia that inspired me to start Hookah Expo worldwide. Okay. I was thinking, okay, Germany is doing it, Russia is doing it, Brazil is doing it. How come the U.S. has nothing? Usually the U.S. is one of the leaders in a lot of different arenas, right? But for Hookah, we don't have any representation. So I'm bringing all the brands together, and um, I'm also bringing brands from uh, Germany and from Russia, and hopefully some Spanish. We have Coco King, you yeah. know him? Uh, Jesus King Coco. With, King Coco yeah, with, I met the other in Sevilla last week, two very, weeks ago. Yeah. Jesus, very nice guy. Yes. And um, he exhibited last year at Hookah Expo Worldwide. Um, we have some Russians like Workbund. We have Germans like Eon. You're familiar with Eon Hookahs? Uh, they came out, so I'm trying to bring the whole world to the U.S. and then I'd like to come and actually one day make my own exhibit too. It's uh, this is the best market here on this side of the world. It is. So. Okay, gentlemen, you have anything to say? I'm just listening. You're just listening? Yeah. Uh, Tell me about how this guy right here. Nobody knows him. He's the biggest guy in all of Russia when it comes down to charcoal, right? Yes, you're right. Yes. My What's the name of the, your brand again? Oasis. My, um, my brand is Oasis. We work with the charcoal there. And uh, for the last... We start from uh, 2015, but before I have a lot of experience with the hookah. Actually, I start from maybe 2009 or 2010. Uh, I start from just a hookah master. Because I have only one dream to open my uh, lounge. But I don't have any experience with it. Uh, before I was just smoking shisha with my friend at home, that's it. And uh, for me it was, it was just like, a, um, uh, how can I say it? Uh, no, ah, it was like a challenge to me, because uh, to go to the lounge and uh, to, like, to study there, to study how it works, how it works bar, how it works uh, sh shisha, and after that I own open my own lounge. After that uh, we uh, start to see that the charcoal is very important because all we smoke it starts from the charcoal. If we don't have a charcoal, we can smoke. And uh, before we have only two brands here. I mean, uh, just a reg. Uh, gonna say about the regular. Uh, coconut charcoal. It was uh, coca brico and coconara. Uh, and we start to know that charcoal is not so uh, easy because um, it looks easy. It, it looks like a, uh, cubes, black cubes, and that's it. But you know that when we smoke it, uh, we can uh, feel some taste. We can uh, see that some charcoal going black again, and uh, if we yeah, this time uh, we start to know a lot about uh, shisha, we, we start to buy uh, expensive, more expensive uh, uh, hookah. We start to buy more expensive and difficult, uh, different uh, tobacco, and uh, and we just even take any part to charcoal. I agree with you on a lot of these things because I'm also in the uh, charcoal business, as you know, and I think the brands that are very cheap and poor quality, they ruin the whole experience and the growth for hookah. Because you know, some people, they're only for business. You don't sound like it. You sound like you want the best premium quality, right? We're going step by step, yeah. of course. Uh, even now, uh, it looks like we have a lot of experience with the charcoal. But even now, we study 
uh, every time we took, uh, you know, that uh, it's impossible to have uh, a regular uh, stable quality for all time. And I even now, uh, for the last hour test, we see that uh, in Indonesia uh, it's a rainy season there. And uh, when we put the charcoal to the stove, we see sometimes uh, smoke there. Uh, but you know, it's not only smoke, it's maybe um, water. It may be water, because we have some experience there. We just uh, take a glass, uh, put under the stove, and we see the water over there. Not, not only, not only, but uh, we start from the charcoal. Yes, of course. Uh, you know that some people are uh, thinking maybe to make some electricity yes. charcoal, but uh, you know it's like the way when uh, we, uh, in the future maybe we don't need any hookah masters, but it's it's a hand. We work with it, and we, uh, we sometimes uh, we don't even need uh, shisha. We need a friend who can come to us to speak with uh, about shisha. I think it's a great opportunity to speak with them. You're doing a good job here in Russia. And uh, why don't you come to Las Vegas and show us Oasis brand? Show us your charcoal in the United States. We try our best. Okay. All right. Yes, please. The German market. I smoked hookah 10 years ago and yes, you said the German culture is only take a Turkish bowl and a butcher and coal on it and smoke one and a half hours. No one put the coal down or move it and I must thank you. Uh, in the last three years the German culture changed. Somo, hookah John 80 feet, Dreamony Harmony, it brings the love from other countries to Germany because hookah is not only put a Turkish bowl, put a butcher, it's play with the heat management, it's love. Hookah's not only put a tobacco inside, butcher and on. And you with your bowls, with your funnels, you bring the love from other country, from uh, USA, from Brazil to Germany and change the German market. And I must thank you for the cooperation with SOMO. But two years before, no one knew what is a bowl, what is a funnel. All German people don't uh, know about a funnel, only smoke with a Turkish bowl. By the way, what is the uh, preferred way to smoke in the US? What is the style of smoking? Because obviously you introduce a very high quality products in terms of bowls and uh, for me my, the Yuga John 80 feet 80 was the first uh, bowl I smoked uh, of a good quality white clay bowl. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, in different countries, you know, people like to smoke with the foil on top, just coal on top. In Spain, we smoke a lot with the uh, HMD devices. Uh, the Apple on top is one of the most prop popular, probably the uh, Brohood as well. Uh, what, is, what are the preferences in, uh, in the United States? Well, um, I think the preferences in the world was changed by uh, Cloud and with the Lotus. When the Lotus came, um, it was a game changer. It was one of the few game changers. Uh, I believe what they did was make hookah smoking easier for the consumer. Because sometimes people get intimidated. They don't know how to put everything together. And HMD device, uh, whichever brand it is, makes your session uh, easier and lasting longer. Um, but for me, I'm still very traditional. I use the funnel bowl, you know, obviously our bowls. And I put foil, but I use a simple device called the um, flavor saver. Yes, it just raises it. I mean, not too many people do that anymore. A lot of people are relying on the HMDs. So I like to, uh, I mean, once in a while I put on an HMD just to try it. But I really, somehow it becomes a ritual for me. Every day I make my own bowl, I put my foil, I poke it. It's like ritualistic, you know? So. What is it for the rest of the United States? I think it's 50-50. I mean, you've got a lot of people like me that stay with foil, but the HMDs is like 50% of hookah smokers have one, I believe. Yeah. 
And as far as bowls, though, uh, I think the funnel bowl is the biggest thing in the United States, which is different from Russia using uh, uh, Egyptian style or Turkish style bowl. Um, I might see if I can take the inspiration from that and the hookah john funnel bowl and bring together a, a, a product, a new product soon. I'm actually trying to work on that right now. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Any, anybody have anything else you want to say, discuss? Uh, what's the name of your lounge? Uh, before, we, uh, we have a lounge. Uh, it's called uh, Smokehouse. But uh, it was uh, like a franchise. But for now, we need to open uh, our new office in the same place. Uh, we start to open a lounge. The same uh, name, like a brand, Oasis Lounge. Maybe we're going to open it in this March in Moscow. Good luck. I will come out and see you. And I want to try it. OK? Thank you very much. I would like to discuss something, because I'm kind of curious. Um, how do you think the hookah market worldwide will go in the next few years? Because I saw that, for example, in the US, regulations are going hard on it. And Spain is really hard too for launches. It's basically non-existence because they are really hard on it with the with the with the regulations. So I would like to know your opinion about that. Do you think it will grow? It will stay the same? It will get attacked in a certain kind of way? Or what do you think about it? Yeah, you bring up a very good point. Um, every government around the world is different, but there uh, many of them are having to do the same thing lately, which is interfere with um, hookah smoking and um, yeah in the US they're interfering right now but you know we like to say we're a democracy but and we understand maybe smoking is uh, we have a, a vape issue with children smoking vape okay we don't believe in that but this has nothing to do with vape yes yes we're trying to educate that these are politicians all right between us they, they don't know what they're doing they want to make a name for themselves they want to say look what i did i passed this bill okay i did this i did this i did me 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 you know it's politics the only thing that will affect us is laws that's it uh hookah is uh, russia has showed us that hookah can keep going higher and higher so um i think as long as we can communicate with the governments and um just get them off our back, you know, stop messing with us. Then we have, there's a lot more you can do with Shisha. Spain in the last, Spain in the last 10 years, from probably 12 years since 2007, the whole consumption was uh, 39 tons for the whole country. And there was probably only Nakhla available there. In one year, 2007, 39 tons. The projection for 2019, it was around 900 tons. So it grow, the, gro the exponential growth is uh, huge, uh, but it's all, it's all relying on uh, if nobody puts you know, the, the sticks in the wheel, you know? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I think we're finished here. You got anything to say? Would you like to say something? Thank you.